Hi guys, I'm Lily. I am one of the interns here at the Green Bay Botanical Garden and today is Flyer Friday for our Facebook Live. So I'm going to talk about two species today. Oh no, it flew away. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about two species today. One is the Great Southern White, which is the one that just flew away on me. And one is the Atala. So both of these species I wanted to highlight together because they have a very, very limited range. Um, so they are both confined mostly to a very small region of Florida. So first the Great Southern White, it kind of lives just on the coast of Florida um, and then also kind of along the Gulf Coast down there, kind of into Louisiana and Texas as well. And it gets a little bit into Mexico as well. So just right along the coast there, but it doesn't really have a huge range, which is a really interesting thing for a butterfly, I think, compared to um, like a painted lady that can be in the United States and the Americas, but also be into Africa and Europe and Asia as well. So butterflies can have just really, really different habitats. So the Great Southern White, and I'm going to try to see if I can find another one just because I want to sh actually show you two types of Great Southern Whites if I can find them because the males and the females actually look kind of different from each other. So they're both basically a very white butterfly. Um, there's actually one kind of right here if you want to show that one. So that one is a female and the females are a lot whiter than the males are, um, they, but then sometimes they do have a little bit of gray on them like that one does. So the interesting thing about the females is their color depends on where they are raised. Um, so the kind of whiter ones will be raised more in a dry season and the more darker ones that get kind of gray are more raised in a wetter season. Yeah, so we can look at another female. This one's from the side, so you can see that it's really, really dark right there on the side. So that one was probably raised in a wetter environment than um, some of the ones that end up being a little bit whiter. Um, and then the males are also kind of interesting because they are more of a yellow, which I'm going to try to find one of those as well. I'm trying to see if some of the ones over here. That one's a male? Okay. Okay, yeah, so Ryan here is holding. Oh no. Came onto this flower now. Um, so this one came out of the flower here, and this one is a male, so you can see it's a lot yellower than the female, so that's how you can really tell those ones apart. The other thing that I want to show, and maybe it's not super bright on this one, but look at the ends of their antenna when they come in. They're actually turquoise in a lot of cases, um, so that can be a really cool color that you don't often see in nature, those kind of bright turquoises and blues aren't often super, super common in nature. So it can be really cool if you find one of the butterflies in here that has those bright colors. Um, and then the other thing about Great Southern Whites, so you won't be able to attract them to your own home because they are not native to Wisconsin, but they lay their eggs on plants in the mustard family. So things like kale and cabbage is where they really like to lay their eggs on and that's kind of cool because those are common plants that people will have in their garden so if you know somebody in Florida that might be within the range of the great southern white and they wanted to attract that specific butterfly they might be able to attract it through planting those plants and I think after the live is done we're going to post a photo in the comments of um, plants that fall into the mustard family because there was basically one native mustard plant, but humans domesticated it for a bunch of different reasons, and that's how we get diversity through having cauliflower and broccoli and kale and all these really different looking plants that come from a very, very similar ancestor. And then I think we are also going to talk about 
the Atala, which is another one with a limited range, and it might be one of my favorite butterflies in here. It's very, very small. It's definitely my favorite butterfly. Yeah, so this guy right here, and you can kind of see my finger by it, so you can see how small it is. This is just about <laughs> oh. our, our smallest butterfly in here. I think we have a couple other Atalas. We've got one hand right up here as well, so maybe you can still see it a little bit, even though, oh, actually we have one just a little bit oh, lower there we go. right there, so that way it can be on camera a little easier. Um, so the Atalas were actually thought to be extinct for a while. So in about the 30s through 50s, people thought the Atalas were extinct. And part of that is due to them also being in a very limited range, just like the Great Southern White. They really only live in a very small area of Florida and then a couple of those islands off the, co off the coast of Florida as well. Um, and they have their host plant on something called a cycad, which kind of looks like a palm tree. It's kind of within that family of plants. Um, and there are a lot of different types of cycads, but there's really only one native one that the Atalas will lay their eggs on and that they really, really love. Um, but recently, as people start to build up their gardens, especially tropical gardens, in some of those houses in Florida, there's some non-native versions of a very similar plant that some Atalas have actually been able to lay their eggs on. So the combination of those gardens with those types of plants, as well as um, the efforts of scientists to try to reintroduce this species, they have actually become much more common in Florida. They've really been reintroduced down there. Now some people almost see them as pests, even though just, you know, a few years ago people thought they might have been extinct. So I think that's kind of a cool thing about the Atala. Um, and in here, I've kind of shown you that they are on some of these large leafed plants kind of in the shade, which if you're looking for one, kind of definitely in the back on some of those really big leaves, the back of the butterfly house is where we find them a lot if you want to look for one of these guys. They can be a little hard to spot just because they are so small, but once you find them, I'm sure you're going to find a bunch of them in a very, very similar area. And like the great southern whites, is there a way to distinguish male and female with the Atala, Lily? So the Atala is a lot harder to distinguish the male and female. There's not really a ton of clues to figure out the difference unless you're a scientist and you can look really close up. So that's definitely something that's interesting when you come into the butterfly house. Some species can be pretty easy to distinguish right away whether they're male or female, but other species like the Atala are going to be really hard to figure that out. And I think that is about all that we have to show you for this week. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, visit gbbg.org if you want to make a reservation for the Butterfly House or if you want to learn any of the other facts that we have about butterflies on there. Thanks for watching!